Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. In this video, we're going to be going through the five things that an analyst does in his day-to-day -day job. While going through those five things, I will try to give you some practical examples and at the same time, I will be discussing the kind of skills you need in each thing or topic so it's going to help you gain a better understanding of what an analyst does. Right, so the first thing a data analyst does is reporting. As a data analyst, you're going to be spending a lot of your time either maintaining existing reports and pushing them out to the business or creating new reports from scratch. These reports now can be in the form of uh, Excel dashboards or PowerPoint decks or any other visualization tool like uh, uh, Power BI, Tableau or Click. If you're going to be creating new reports now, you will be probably using Excel or SQL, which is where you're going to be bringing all the data together, cleaning it, and then creating your visuals, and then, yeah, creating your reports and then pushing them out to the business. I remember when I first started working as an analyst, my first job was that I was responsible for five different reports. So I had to make sure that those reports were refreshed weekly, uh, they had the right data, uh, they were going to the right people, and I was sending those reports out before the deadline. Now, looking at the kind of skills you need to do reporting, I would say you need very good technical skills. So things like um, data gathering, data cleaning, data transformation, and data storing in order to do reporting. Hence, I would suggest starting using SQL and Excel more so you can learn these uh, technical skills. If you want, I have an Excel tutorial and an SQL tutorial in my YouTube channel. I'm going to have a link, link in the description below and that should get you started on those skills. Additionally, to do reporting, I would say you need a very good organization skills and very good attention to detail skills. Just because you will need to know where everything is saved, you will need to know the order that you have to do things, you will need to know which report is going to go to which people, you need to know which report has to be refreshed when. Um, and attention to detail is that you need to make sure that all the numbers are correct. You need to be able to observe that, oh, this number is wrong or this date is wrong or I have to fix this before I send the report out. The last thing I would say that you need to have, uh, the last skill I would say is punctuality because you need to make sure that you send the reports out on time to the right people. Otherwise, you're going to upset the business. So an example of reporting in this first step is going to be that let's assume that this is uh, here is one report and then I have another report here and then I have another report on let's say Power BI. Uh, as an analyst now you will need to be able to make sure that all the um, raw data that comes in in these reports are, is correct. So that data is correctly refreshed from, let's say, SQL. So we have a script, let's say, in SQL that brings the data, cleans the data, transforms the data, and then it sends the data into these pivot tables in Excel. And what you're going to have to make sure is that your reports, all of these different reports that I've just shown now, they have the correct data and they are out, sent out to the business at the right time to the right people. Right. So the second thing a data analyst does is guess what? spending time analyzing the data. So after finishing with all the refreshing of all those reports we uh, discussed on the step before, then the data analyst is going to spend time looking at the data in different ways by using different filters and slices so the analyst can understand the data better and then get insights out of the data. So an example here is maybe we've seen a huge uh, spike into sales this week versus last week. So maybe we have to look at why did that spike happen and then you, you maybe have to go and look at different report, a marketing report maybe, and then you can see that, hey, there was a marketing campaign run during those dates and, um, and this campaign has impacted sales to be increased by this much. So basically, you need to spend time uh, investigating what has happened from um, last week to this week or depending on what report are you looking, maybe you're looking monthly reports, uh, so you can create your insights. Now, something that happens when you look at the data um, when you are analyzing the data is that often you find a lot of mistakes in the reports, so you're going to have to go back in SQL or Excel uh, or data and fix those mistakes. Now, looking at the kind of skills you need in order to perform analysis, I would say that, again, you need very good technical skills here because 
maybe you need to go back to your SQL database or any database and pull more data in. So you need to have technical skills to be able to do this. Additionally, maybe in your own report or in your visualization tool, you're gonna have to drill in the data. You're gonna have to maybe use different um, slicers, different filters, order the data in different ways or pivot the data in different ways until you arrive to your, uh, until you do your analysis basically and arrive to your conclusions, you create your insights and then you push it out to the business. So technical skills, very important. The next thing, the next skill that is very useful, not just here, but everywhere is problem solving. So in the real world of analytics, there is no standardized solution for every pro problem. An analyst or the analyst should come up with his own solutions to the problems that he's going to be facing every day. And these problems could be things like, why, why are we not selling enough uh, value? Why our volume is going down? Why our footfall is going down? Why our, our traffic is going down? Well, usually in the real world, you're investigating the negative things. The positive things are just positive stories, right? So the next thing that is very important here now is that as an analyst, you need to be able to ask the right questions to do your analysis because maybe you don't know from where to start. So, or maybe you don't have all the data. So you need to be able to ask the right questions and this is gonna help you with your analysis. The last thing that is important in this step is it's not really a skill, but you should be able to, uh, uh, you should be able to know how to fix mistakes and issues in the reports. Because as I said before, the reality is that when you're doing your analysis, you will be finding a lot of issues, a lot of bugs, a lot of mistakes in the reports, and you will need to be able to fix those issues. Now, when it comes to analyzing data, what I meant with, with what I said above is that you will need to open the report now and spend time looking at the report from different angles. So let's say we are looking at SMB, non-profit, and then uh, we don't want to see potential accounts. And then we come down to the report, we see how they perform, we see what's going on. So we need to start playing with different filters and slices just to analyze the data. And then as soon as we play with all these filters in all the different reports, maybe I'm using a different report to, to combine them together into my insights, I'll need to go in a PowerPoint and start write down my commentary. What has happened, what has gone well, what has gone bad and why. If you're not explaining the why, then it's just gonna be commentary. But if you are explaining the why, then it's gonna be insights. Now, the third thing that the analyst does is basically the presentation of the insights. So after you finish with the refreshing the reports and then analyzing your data and generating insights, then you're going to have to take those insights and present them back to the business. Usually this is in the form of a PowerPoint deck with the commentary and insights inside the PowerPoint, or if it's via um, email or any other um, electronic uh, communications tool, then you're going to have your results, uh, your insights written down in the form of text. Now, please write what I'm about to say down if you're aiming to uh, pursue a career in data analytics. This uh, presentation of insights is the most important skill that the business values the most in a data analyst. Meaning that it does not matter if you're a great coder in Python or if you have great predictive analytics skills or machine learning, if you are not able to turn your data into insights, and when I say insights, I mean valuable insights for the business where they can take action on those insights, then the business is not gonna value you as a good analyst. So make sure every time you're presenting your insights or you're sharing your insights, please make sure that you add recommendations on those insights so the business can take action on those recommendations. Now, looking at the kind of skills you need in this step, I would say that the ability to turn data into valuable and actionable insights is the most important skill that a data scientist or a data analyst should have. Because as I said before, it does not matter if you're the greatest coder in the world or if you know how to use all the programming languages or your predictive models are the best, have the best accuracy. If you cannot turn data into insights, the business is not going to value you at all. Now, the second skill, which is very important here, I would say is communication skills and storytelling skills. 
because you need to be able to structure your insights and your comments in a way, in a nice way, so you can actually tell a story out of it and communicate it to the business in a way that they're going to understand what you're trying to say, what you're trying to sell, let's say, in this case. Um, the next uh, skill that I would say is very important here uh, is critical thinking. Now, critical thinking is also very important when it comes to analyzing the data, which I haven't mentioned before, but these two go together. You will need to be able to think critically uh, about data and when it comes to investigating data in order to arrive to insights. So understand the motives, understand the, the whys, connect uh, more data sources together, investigate deeper. So use critical thinking to get, to get better at writing insights. And the last skill that I would say is very, very useful here is the strategic thinking because you will need to be able, you will need to make sure that your analysis is aligned with the business objectives because maybe you've, you've done some great insights and then you go to a presentation, so you go to a meeting and you present those insights on a subject that the business is not concerned about. So your insights, yes, they are very good insights, but the biz is, they are not aligned with the business objectives, so uh, they are not going to be of any value to the business. So strategic thinking is very important here too. By the way, if you feel that you've gained enough value out of this uh, video, please click that like button and subscribe to my channel. Right, so the fourth thing that the analyst does now is ad hoc requests. So an ad hoc request is basically a one-off request that is going to derive on the back of uh, meetings that your managers are going to have. So for example, they're coming to work this week, they have this meeting on Monday morning, and then they see that there are uh, sales that have gone down by 10%. So the manager is going to come to you and it's going to be like, um, hey, Yanis, could you please investigate why the sales went down by 10% this week? And this, because it's a one-off uh, analysis that you're going to do, is not recurring like the reporting you're going to be running every week. It's going to be an ad hoc request. Now, looking at the skills that you need when it comes to running ad hoc uh, requests, I would say that you need, again, technical skills, but I've explained before why they are important. Uh, you need problem-solving skills because uh, you will need to know from where to start and how to approach the problem, how to solve the problem as a one-off. You're going to need uh, critical thinking, which I've explained this before. Uh, asking the right questions is, is also very good here. And the last thing that you're going to need, which is new, I would say you need very good time management. Because usually the ad hoc it should be done very, the turnover should be quite quickly. Because the business just had this meeting, They've, all the managers, they have identified that we have a problem. We are 10% down. We need an answer quite relatively quickly. What I would suggest here is uh, usually you need to give uh, to find the, the issue straight away, to find the big, the big problem, let's say. So you, you send out the first version of the ad hoc and you say, look, I, I've done this analysis up until now. I haven't finished it yet. This is version one, but I have identified that these are the reasons why uh, our sales are, t are down by 10%. And just say on that email or on your communication that you're going to look further uh, deeper into it and you're going to come back to them with more. So this is how we approach ad hoc requests. Now, the last thing that the data analyst does is the automation of all processes. As an analyst, you will need to learn how to work smarter and not harder. The majority of all the reporting that I have mentioned before should be, should be built in a fully automated way by using SQL to Excel or SQL to visualization tool connections. So all, everything is automated. Now, there is a way, a nice way of building reports so that every time or every day that you have new data in your database, all you have to do is click refresh and then open the reports and run the reports and then all the data is going to be nicely clean, model, transform and ready for you to use. Now, the benefit of doing this is that you're going to eliminate all manual work so you're not going to have to spend time doing all the copy paste, drag and dropping, cleaning, moving data yourself and that you're going to have more time to spend on generating insights analyzing the reports and writing insights, which is basically what the uh, organization or businesses value the most. Now, looking at the skills you need here, obviously technical skills are very important. You will need to be able to script 
everything down with a nice order so everything is going to work in a nice order uh, so here we're going to need probably um, SQL and Excel and visualization uh, tools knowledge again maybe you need to do you need to learn some Python later on if you're going to model the data more heavily uh, but that's for later on uh, another skill which is very very important here is the methodical thinking because if you are automating all these processes you will need to plan out what needs to be done first so let's say this view needs to get the, the data from this table first then it needs to get the data from this table then we need to create a connection that is going to go to visual the, this visualization tool so methodical thinking is also very important here now, the last skill that I personally find very important in the automation of work, I would say is that the ability to see the bigger picture, because if you, if you follow data analytics for some time now, everyone complains about how much time they spend cleaning the data, sorting the data, transforming the data. However, in my line of work, that's because I, we see the bigger picture, we, we can spend some more time at the beginning and automate all those processes so you don't have to keep redoing all this manual work. So being able to see the bigger picture and understand all the benefits of automation, I think is really, really important here. Now, just to make you understand how the automation of our reports work, I'm going to give you an example here. So this dashboard, for example, is all connected with SQL views. So the way it works is that, let's say, all this graph is connected with the raw data um, in the hidden sheets. So let's say in this raw data, sorry, in the row pivots. And then, so the, the graph, this graph is the same with this graph. And then this graph gets the data from here. And then this um, uh, table here gets the data from the pivot table. Then this pivot table is actually connected with SQL. So if you check, it's connected with the revenue summary. And if I go back to SQL now, this uh, revenue summary view, uh, there we go, is actually connected with the tables here in SQL. So basically, each time I have new data in my tables, uh, then all I have to do is click F5. I don't even have to do F5 here because it's a view. All I have to do is go back to my report and click, um, go back to the overall page, go to data and click refresh all here. And then everything is gonna be updated with the new data. And that, that so basically means within five, 10 seconds, I have the new data for the week ready to use. And I have saved all that manual work by copying, pasting, dragging, dropping, and transforming by automating all my work through using um, SQL and Excel. Same way applies with SQL and visualization tools or any other uh, software that you're using. Right, so there is another thing that a bit more advanced data analysts do, which is basically machine learning. However, I haven't included machine learning into the top, uh, the main five things that the data analyst does, just because it's not the most typical thing that the data analyst is gonna be doing during its day-to-day -day routine. However, I can imagine that if you are working as a data analyst, at some point, you're going to want to learn how to uh, apply machine learning models. So I'm just going to quickly go through the skills or how to get started there. I would suggest that you will learn how to use um, Python or R, which is basically another software uh, language which is going to help you write uh, predictive models. Uh, yeah, the code, write the code there. I would suggest that you start learning about stats and machine learning models to start with the most famous ones. So how to run a simple uh, regression analysis in Python or R or how to run simple classifiers like logistic regression, decision trees, uh, support vector machines or uh, let's say K nearest neighbors. Right, so these are the five plus one main things that the data analyst does in his day-to-day work. If you have any questions around them, please let me know in the comments below. If you feel that you've gained enough value out of this video, please click that like button and subscribe to my channel. Additionally, if you have different views around those five plus one things that I have mentioned, please let me know in the comments below because I'm very interested to hear what you have to say. If you have anything in mind in the concept of uh, data analytics that you want me to do a video about, please let me know again in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching.